All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about rear bags. When it comes to long range shooting, this is a critical accessory that you can't live without. When it comes to all disciplines of shooting, it's a really nice accessory to have. And luckily for you, these are actually really cheap. So let's go. Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount, and we're out here at our training facility in beautiful Summit Point, West Virginia, which also happens to be an active raceway, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me over these race cars. But today we're gonna to be talking about rear bags, a very critical component of long range shooting, and I'm gonna talk about the different types that we recommend, and ultimately how to use them correctly. Um, and by the way, all these rear bags that you see here are ones that we use, we carry, and they're on our website at ParamountTactical.com. So if you decide that you wanna pick one of these up, make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com. We appreciate the support because we do a lot of product testing, we're constantly testing, and we're always trying to bring you the absolute best gear available. And that's what this, these are all about. So as you can see, just by what's on this table, you know, there's different designs of rear bags, there's different name brands, and every single one of these bags are extremely high quality. Every single one of these are made in the USA. Uh, these are gonna last you a really, really long time, if not a lifetime. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is what you're gonna find is that not one rear bag is gonna do everything that you want it to do or be the perfect solution in every situation, even if you're only using one gun. You're probably gonna use a different rear bag if you're shooting in the prone, uh, and even that can change depending on what you, how high you need your bipods, uh, if you're shooting from you know, a bench. And then if you start switching guns, it gets a little more complicated where you might need a completely different rear bag for that gun, depending on how that stock is designed. So those are all the things I wanna cover with you. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is one of the newest additions that we started carrying, and this is the Crosstack Extra Extra Large. I think this says a lot about how we're constantly looking for better products out there. And this is one that we came across, we did some testing on, we were really happy about that. This is the Crosstack Extra Extra Large, one that we've been carrying and using for a really long time. And I use every single one of these bags on a regular basis, even on the exact same gun. Again, different situations, you find another one that is gonna fit that situation, that shooting position much better than others. Uh, this right here is the Tab Gear Large, and then with different fills, that's another thing that we're gonna talk about. So we have a standard or, or heavy fill. It's not heavy, but, and then we have a really light fill. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. And then we have the Tab Gear Small, which really does come in handy sometime. Over here, we have some of the smaller cross tacks. This is the standard cross tack tactical rear squeeze bag. This is the large, uh, and they do come in different colors and different materials. And then right here, what we have is, again, an, uh, just a classic. We've probably been using this same bag for five or six years now. This is a Tab Gear straight lace bag. And again, all of these are on our website. The first one I want to talk about is the Crosstac Extra Extra Large. This has become one of our favorite bags out there. Uh, extremely well constructed. Again, all American made. It does come with a lanyard that you have here and a little clip. And one thing I want you to notice is that every single one of these bags has a hand loop that can be utilized either in a vertical or a horizontal position. That's really important. Now, these do come in different colors and we have plenty of colors to choose from. You can see that these three bags right here are basically made out of a canvas or Cordura material and they're great. But I'll tell you right now, the one that I use the most and one that I recommend the most is this FDE one. It is made out of a like a really grippy, almost rubberized material. I really like how the gun rests down on it. I like how it grips the bottom. I also like how when I'm actually utilizing this, it just gives me a little bit more purchase. These standard Cordura ones, which, which are what most rear bags are made out of, they do a great job, nothing wrong with them, but they are a little, they're not as gripping, right? So they can slip on you just a little bit and things like that. Whether you're putting the gun on it, whether you're squeezing it with a bag, I just I just like this. I really like this material. It's the perfect material for a rear bag. And uh, whoever came up with this idea to use this material for a rear bag, man, they, they, they did it right. So the next one I wanna talk about is the Tab Gear Large Bag. Folks, I've been using this bag for a really long time. They're extremely versatile, as are these. Um, but I still use these on, a, on a just a regular basis. And you can see we have an adjustable Velcro hand strap over here on the vertical position, and then also one on the horizontal position as well. Uh, they come with a nice lanyard. These bags are gonna last you a really, really, really long time. Uh, American made, and they do come in di two different fills, the standard fill and then this light fill. And we stock these. I'll tell you, I don't like the light fill. And, and these are considered heavy, but they're still probably, I don't know, maybe a pound, pound and a half. It's not extremely heavy. But the difference in performance, I would say, 
is, is pretty drastic. If you really, really need a super light, I mean, this is just a couple of ounces. You know, this is just more of a plush fill and the gun doesn't settle on there. It doesn't respond as nicely as does with the standard fill. And then right here, we have the Tab Gear Small, and this is also a heavy fill. Again, you can get both of these in light or heavy, different colors, whatever you want. All right, so over here, we have the Crosstac Tactical Rear Squeeze Bag. This is a standard size, this is a large, and this is the extra large. And I'm gonna go over a couple of features that are specific to these that are pretty nice. Uh, but any of the Crosstac bags that you get in the Coyote is gonna come with that grippier material. I highly recommend that. It's gonna leave me with a bunch of stock because I have a bunch of the other colors, but I do recommend this. If you just want a different color, these still are extremely effective. I just like that uh, gripping material a little bit better. And finally, this is kind of an OG. Man, we've been using this bag right here. As with some of these um, Tab Gear large bags, we've been using these with our training, with our schools. I've been using them personally for probably four or five years. And I bet this thing is probably four or five years old. This is the Tab Gear straight lace bag also an excellent bag and again we have the vertical hand grip as well as the horizontal um, which are key factors that we'll talk about in the proper use of a rear bag so one of the features i really like about the cross tack bags is the fact that they have a built-in zipper so you can remove and add fill as needed now when you first get any of these cross tack bags the first thing i'm going to tell you is to take about 25 to 30 percent of the fill out of this. Now, as this bag, you know, breaks in, it's gonna get a little looser and some of this material is gonna stretch out. And that's that goes for whether we're talking about this gripping material or the standard Cordura. Um, and then you can actually add some of that fill back in. So that way you're always gonna have a bag that feels exactly what you want, the right amount of rigidity and the right amount of give. And these allow you to do that. Whereas some of the Tab Gear bags, you really can't remove or add fill. Um, and they do take, they actually come overstuffed. You can see like this one, this is almost overstuffed, but as you break this in, and it only takes probably you know a few times using it, uh, it's gonna be just the right amount and these bags last a long time. But the first thing that I'm gonna do with one of these cross tag bags, because they do come overfilled, is I'm gonna remove about 25 to 30% of the fill, and I'm gonna hold on to that, and then that way if I need to adjust that, whether it be in the immediate or in the future, we can do that. So to do that, and of course, it's better to do this indoors where it's not uh, windy, but I'm just gonna open up this zipper All right, and then I'm gonna have a gallon size or whatever bag you wanna use or a container that you wanna use, but we're gonna remove a fair amount of that fill. So as you can see, I removed quite a bit of fill from there. And now what I have is a bag that is much more pliable, that's gonna allow that gun to rest down into the bag exactly how I want. Now, as I get down there and I'm using this bag, if I wanna add a little bit more fill or remove some more, you know, it's basically adjustable, which is really nice with this. And as this, this bag wears or breaks in, it's gonna get a little, it's gonna stretch out a little bit. So keep this on hand, you can fill it up as you go and it's always gonna be the exact right amount of pliability that you want it to be, that you prefer. All right, so I, now that I have this adjusted to where I want it and it feels the way I want it to, I'm gonna show you guys how to use these correctly because it is, there's some nuanced things that you need to be doing to maximize your performance and maximize the precision out of your gun. Now, many of you watching this are like, Gary, I don't shoot long range. I don't need a rear bag. I'm just gonna tell you right now, if you're not at a minimum, zeroing your ARs or other rifles with a rear bag, you are not getting the best zero possible. And the same thing goes with even pistols and red dots. I use these all the time to actually zero a red dot as well. So rear bags in my mind are just a must for all disciplines of shooting. And it's something you definitely wanna utilize. If you're not using a rear bag, you're not getting the best zero possible and you're not shooting the smallest groups. And we all wanna shoot smaller groups, right? That's what it's all about. All right, let's go do it. All right, so once again, we find ourselves in the uh, sexy pose. I know you guys like that. Uh, and by by the way, I'm getting ready to do a video on these. Um, I have the Crosstack Deluxe shooting mat here. It's a larger mat. Then next to me, right over there, is the Crosstack Recon mat. It's a smaller, more packable mat. But both of these are the nicest shooting mats I've ever used. And uh, they're on a website if you're interested in that, but I am getting ready to do a video on them. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is show you the difference that a rear back can actually make. I'm actually going to uh, put this gun on the target down there and try to hold it as still as possible. 
without a rear bag. And I will tell you right now, it is, uh, it's really cold out here, about 40 degrees, the wind's blowing pretty good. So I am shivering a little bit. This is kind of a worst case scenario. I'm not over exaggerating this, but I'm gonna try to hold this as still as possible without a shooting bag. All right, so let's see where we're at here. And I will dial this up pretty much as high as possible. So in these conditions, now I'm talking, but in these conditions, this is about as still as I can possibly hold this rifle. We got about a 15 mile an hour wind from the 12 o'clock. It's cold, I'm shivering a little bit. I'll quit talking so you can see exactly. I'm gonna do my best to hold it as completely still as possible. All right, that's about the best I can do. All right, now we're gonna get a rear bag back here. Now let's see the difference. So again, right there, I'm shivering. Worst case scenario, pretty much and we can see what a difference in how still we can hold that gun if we utilize these bags properly. Now, you are gonna need different bags for different situations. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Even with this gun, depending on the, the shooting conditions, whether I'm shooting from you know, a bench, whether I'm shooting from the prone, whether I need my bipods raised up, maybe I'm shooting over something, whatever it is, there's gonna be times when you need different bags for different situations, even when you're utilizing the same gun. And I am gonna illustrate using some different guns but before we get into that, let's talk about the fundamentals of using a rear bag. Folks, you've got to have control of these bags. You just gotta have control of these bags. And I see a lot of people do things like this where they're stacking up bags. And there's nothing wrong with stacking up a bag because sometimes you have to do that, but they, use, they start using them like this where you don't have control or I see people like pinching the back of these or a side of these or whatever else. If you're gonna use a rear bag and get the most fidelity out of each shot, you gotta have control of this. You gotta have your hand through these straps. You're wanting to rest the chassis or the buttstock onto the rear bag, and you wanna get good circumferential pressure so that it's pushing up or pressing straight down. So if you don't have good control of the bag, you don't have your hand wrapped around the bag, you're not going, you're, you're gonna be inputting some lateral and horizontal deviation and not just controlling the elevation. The other thing that I see it with people doing is, you know, it's just a matter of expedience, right? They're trying to put it underneath the pistol grip. They're putting it in all these weird spots where once again, I, I literally see this all the time, this right here. All right, that is not gonna do anything for you. We gotta find a place where we have it evenly on the bag. A lot of times I shoot this type of rifle just like this, all right? My hand's out of the way, I'm controlling that bag. Ideally, we have it right back here. Sometimes this bag's too large, that's where one of these come in. Again, I get it through there, and now I can control that. Now I can raise or lower my bipods and we can use different bags. You know, sometimes based on the design of the chassis and or the buttstock back here, Sometimes you do have to stack bags, and there's lots of times I'll do things like this where I'm stacking, but I want it flat, and I want this nice and neat so that we have good ele elevation control. We have good vertical control of what's going on with this gun. So you can do things like this, but you gotta have control of the bag, and you want the gun or the buttstock sitting in the center of your rear bag. It's, it's super critical. But you've got to have good control of the bag and you've got to have the bag placed properly on the rifle. And then you gotta have the rifle placed in the center of that bag so that you're getting good vertical control of that bag. You're not inputting left or right deviation. We have things on guns like this bag rider right back here. Again, sometimes just depending on the shooting situation, I, I do this a lot with these particular chassis guns. And I'm not trying to do any weird things like this, right? That's what's important, regardless of what bag that you're using. All right, so now let's talk about the same concept, but now we're using a much more traditional rifle, right? And again, if you have these traditional style rifle and buttstocks, 
you have this taper and you can utilize that to get additional or less elevation. You know, maybe the bag is large. And so, you know, we need to get it up here on the smaller end, or maybe we have a smaller bag like we have with this. And now I can move this backwards, but the concepts are the same. You know, we want that bag on a part of the rifle that has a good amount of surface area that is as even as a surface area as possible. And then we want to make sure that that gun is placed in the center of that bag and it's, it's, it's just resting there. That's really what it comes down to. It's just resting there. And then we have positive control of the bag. And as we squeeze, that, that gun is going straight up or down. That's what we're trying to accomplish with this. All right, so here we have an AR-15, and especially if you're zeroing, but if you're doing any precision shooting with any sort of rifle, you should be utilizing a rear bag. And I do think with the AR, um, the cross -tac, uh, tactical rear bag, standard size, and the large, I think this is where those are best suited. Um, these work really well. You can see back here on this one, I would use this and just like this on the rear larger portion, or even possibly here and even possibly here with one of these taller bags. But I do think these skinnier bags are kind of, you can use them with a precision rifle, but I do think the extra, extra large is the way to go. These tab gear bags are the way to go. And even the straight lakes bags are the way to go when it comes to precision rifles. As a matter of fact, for all my precision rifles, these are the three bags that I pretty much always have on me. And even the fourth, because I do use this sometime. Uh, it's just a fact. I'm not trying to upsell you. I'm not trying to get you to buy 10 bags. It's just really nice to be able to have the right shape bag, the right size bag for any given situation. You can absolutely get by with one of these. Um, you just have to play around and modify either your position, your bipods uh, to accommodate the bag. And if you're only gonna buy two bags, these are the two bags I would I would say buy. These two bags I you can use for 95 plus percent of all shooting situations between the shape of these. Um, they just make great bags. And, and this, really both of these, if you needed to, you could actually use these positional shooting bags to shooting off the of barricades and things like that. Done that many times. All right, so now that we've talked about the importance of being able to control that bag properly, as well as make sure that you're finding a good place to put it on the rifle, then also making sure the placement of the rifle onto the bag is correct. We got all that stuff out of the way. Now what I wanna talk about is how to properly aim while utilizing a rear bag and get the most stable shooting position possible. But before we do that, if you like content like this, make sure you like, subscribe, throw a comment down below. Also, make sure you join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time for our Dangerous Liberty podcast. We talk about guns, gear, training, politics. We have special guests on all the time. Make sure you come join us for that. We do that podcast live so that you can join in on the conversation. You get to comment, you get to ask questions. It's a lot of fun, so join us for that. And if you're interested in learning the long range the right way, the cheapest, most efficient way possible, and you don't want to waste a bunch of money buying the wrong gear, waste a bunch of money on ammo, sending it down range and getting frustrated because you're not getting the results that you want, go check out that video up there about our upcoming XP Long Range Academy courses that were teamed up with Ray Helms from the X-Ring. You're going to have professional instructors. You're going to learn long range the cheapest and easiest way possible. And you're going to have a lot of time training with us. So go check that out. All right. So again, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you what essentially your sight picture should look like when you're using a rear bag. So we'll go ahead and turn this bad boy on. All right, so when I'm using a rear bag, folks, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have as little input into this gun as possible. That's what the rear bag allows us to do. It dampens all of the little micro shakes and, and it helps us stabilize the gun uh, to a very, very fine degree if utilized correctly. So with this target only being at 100 yards, now I'm squeezing this bag and I'm providing some tension the whole time. But I wanna start off with the crosshairs well below my target. I'm just gonna put a little more weight on the cheek riser, my head, and I'm gonna slowly reduce how much tension that I have on the rear bag itself. So I'm gonna get to a spot where the crosshairs are exactly where I want them to be, and I'm freezing and I have this on 36 power, the max magnification, so it'll amplify any kind of shakes or whatever else, but, and I'll quit talking so this thing doesn't shake. And I am shivering, so you're gonna see some shakes there. I'm gonna get right on target.
and you can see how fine I can control that. But folks, this takes practice. It takes technique. This is, you know, it's a very simple device, but you've got to get used to controlling this bag. You got to make sure that the, the bag is properly placed on the right part of the gun, and it's going to help you shoot very, very fine groups. And my target just fell. All right, so the wind just blew over my target, but I changed my parallax, and now we're looking at this dueling tree at 300 yards. I want you to show you, even at 300 yards, how still we can keep this. And look, look, how, look how steady I can keep this even while I'm talking. Now I'll shut up. And if I want to go to a lower target, all I do is squeeze the bag slightly. I'm at the next one. I squeeze a little more. Now I'm at the center of the next one. Squeeze it a little more. I'm at the center of the next one. Squeeze it some more. I'm at the center of the next one. I let go of the tension on the bag and I'm going up to the very top. But look how steady all of that is. And that's what a rear bag is gonna allow you to do. When I'm using a rear bag, I'm getting rid of all these sympathetic movements because I'm not even, I'm not, I'm just resting on the gun. I wanna get my, I wanna get my weight off my elbows. I'm not supporting my weight whatsoever. I'm keeping everything nice and loose and I'm controlling all of that elevation just through the bag itself. And I'm just laying on my gun nice and comfortable. I should be able to practically fall asleep on this thing. So as you can see, folks, really what it comes down to is it's the proper equipment, the proper technique. You don't need talent. You need a little practice, you need technique, and you're gonna be able to shoot as small as a group as you and that gun are able to do. All right, folks, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was informative. I'm sure I left some things out. If you have additional questions that I didn't answer, leave those down in the comments below and I will answer those. And you know, while guns and gear are great, we're really about is training. So make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com. Go check out our upcoming training schedule. We'd love to have you out. We'd love to meet you in person, whether it's long range courses, tactical carbine, handgun, medical courses, driving courses, you name it, we got you covered. Come train with us, you'll be glad you did. And for all your gear needs, make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com where we only carry gear that we've personally tested and we believe in. But until next time, stay armed, stay ready. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>